Okay, so this is a laptop that I was really excited to get in. It's a device that's built to be really powerful, to have the best possible performance, but they've built it into a chassis that's not super thick, right? It's not like a chonky boy, and it has excellent cooling, and it's designed to be cheaper than the competition. So traditionally, when you have a gaming laptop, the way that most companies will try to get the best performance from it is by pumping a lot of wattage to the CPU and the GPU, mostly the GPU. But in doing so, now you have a system that just runs hotter, right? The more wattage you have into this thing, the you gotta figure out a way to, to get rid of the heat. You have to get rid of the heat or else you have systems that just don't perform properly. So the easy way to do that is by making these thick systems. But this, they did something a little bit different. So this is the Prometheus 17 from Electronics. It's a brand that's really popular with the sweaty laptop nerds and my Discord channel. You, I know a lot of the enthusiasts love this brand and this is their newest device. So this is an inch or just under an inch thick. And yet it has the performance of devices that are significantly thicker. So this has the new AMD 5800H and an RTX 3070. The performance is excellent, like fast CPU, fast GPU, fast in benchmarks, fast in Adobe Premiere excellent in games, like truly excellent in games. And keep in mind though, that this is a 1440p panel. So you do need more powerful components to be able to feed the screen resolution, but you can tell that this is an incredibly powerful system. Like this is only a 3070, you can get up to a 3080, but even at the 3070, just look at this benchmark here. This has the same graphics card technically as a Dash F15 or an MSI GS66, but this is just a way better performer. And it boils down to, thermal capabilities. They've designed the thermal solution inside the system to just handle heat way better. And the difference is significant. There's also some new software, which is really geared towards sweaty laptop nerds, but I think it's awesome. You get extensive CPU and GPU control, you get fan control, and all this is really nice to have access to, to have this kind of customizability from software that comes from the manufacturer. Not many brands are doing that, but keep in mind that this is enthusiast level stuff, right? You can't just crank everything to 11 and just right? Just let it rip. It's, you have to know what you're doing or just be aware of what's happening before you just tweak stuff in there. But to have that ability is nice, especially for the enthusiast. Okay. Let's take a look at the inside to see what's going on. So we have a back panel that needs to be removed a little bit differently than normal because there's some plastic tabs in the top corners that have to come off as well. But inside you have access to your two NVMEs, your two RAM slots, your Wi-Fi card, and you can see the thermal solution. So this has five heat pipes and it's got four exhausts. So it's vented off pretty aggressively. I can't tell just by looking at it, what makes it so special. I'll be honest. It's not like they have some crazy orientation for the heat pipes or they have like, you know, six exhausts. It's seemingly relatively normal, maybe a little bit bigger on fans. Maybe that's what it is, but whatever they're doing, it's just, really well done. Uh, the battery down here. So this is a 62 watt hour battery and it's small. There's no way to spin it. It's a small battery, not just for a gaming laptop, but because this is a 17 inch gaming laptop with a 1440p panel, this stuff just drinks a lot of juice. And this is a very small juice box. Uh, I'm barely getting three hours on this thing, like two hours, 48 minutes, ran a couple tests. It's a short battery. Now, if you're someone who's on the market for a powerful desktop replacement system like this, chances are you're not too concerned about battery life, but if you are, this probably won't be the system for you. There's also speakers, like there's new speakers, but they sound exactly like every speaker on a gaming laptop ever. They suck. This is a better keyboard than the traditional electronics mechanical keyboard. So that big rectangular thing that I don't particularly love, this is a lot better. The layout's good and there's a number pad if you like it, but really it's the fact that it's a simple membrane keyboard. This chiclet style doesn't make for great marketing. It's like a regular keyboard, but I think the average person is gonna like this keyboard a lot better. So if you've been dissuade from previous electronic laptops before because of the keyboard, this is not that. And the trackpad is big. They do have this feature where you can turn off half of it. And I've tried it and like, I don't understand why anyone would want that. It feels strange to disable half of it, like laterally, it's, it's an option though, if you're into that. Okay, the screen. So this is a 1440p panel. And if you're playing games, it's awesome, right? High resolution, so you can see stuff a little more clearly, really fast reasonably bright. And because the hardware is powerful, it can handle the higher resolution quite easily. But keep in mind that it is a 1440p panel and you kind of lock yourself into that resolution when it comes to games. I've discussed this before and people will say, you know, there's 
every advanced game has render scales. Like obviously developers have tried to do what they can so that you don't play with interpolation too badly, but because it's a 1440p panel, no matter what you do, playing at 1080p resolution, there's slight scaling issues. It's just, it's very slight, but it is noticeable, especially when it comes to targeting aim. So if you're someone that's really sweaty about competitive gaming, just keep that in mind. And it also affects like videos, right? If you're watching 1080p videos or 4K videos, because it's 1440p and you wanna watch it at that resolution, it, stuff can look slightly askew. Again, it's not a big deal, but I'm just putting it out there for the people that care. Me personally, I love it. I welcome high resolutions. I like it for video editing. I like it for gaming. So there you have it. I do wanna talk about the hinge because this really concerned me when I first saw photos of this device. The reason why it concerns is because there have been laptops in the past, particularly Lenovo's, I think they were like the Y700s. They had a few laptops that used this type of hinge where the hinge is kind of closer to the center of the laptop. And there's a couple things that come up with this. Like when you open the device, you just put a little more torque on the screen. Like it's, it's a little bit different from a side mounted hinge where when you've lifted on the corner, your hinge just kind of goes up with the, the, the force. I don't know the physical, the physics term behind it, but you can clearly tell that when you open a device with a centered hinge, like look at this, when I, when I lift it open, like you're just torquing this part of it a little bit more than a regular laptop. And on those devices, those Lenovo devices, they had a ton of issues. I don't think it was anything wrong with the hinge itself. It was the hinge mount. They just had a, a bunch of bad laptops like that and screens were busting left, right, and center. I cannot tell if that's gonna happen with this device. I can tell you that when I open it up, you can see some metal inserts on the mounting spots, which is good. And there's no weird twisting sounds or any creaks when I open and close it. It seems good, but I can't talk about the durability this early on. Now the rest of the device is a very simple looking laptop. It's got a very plain top cover, like there's no branding or logos on it. It's just pure black. And there is a RGB light up components like on each corner. It's a very simple light streak and you can adjust the colors and software. I'm not crazy about RGB elements, but these are a nice touch to me. And the ports on this machine. So there's three USB-A and one USB-C. I feel like for a 2021 device, there should be at least one more USB-C or just, you know, two and two would be good. But yeah, the port selection is decent. There's also a full size SD if you're into that. And you have your power lane and all the like video outputs on the back, which is nice. But this is a very powerful system. Like this delivers performance that you get in the Chonky Boys. Like it really does. It's able to maintain good clock speeds, good temperatures, and under an inch thick. It's pretty unique. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.